What would you say if I told you that everything happening in the world today was predicted in a book that was written over 2,000 years ago? Would you believe me? What if I showed you irrefutable evidence that not only proves the accuracy of these prophecies, but also lays out a roadmap for future events that will change the world as we know it? Then, would you believe me? The information I'm about to lay out for you has been discussed for thousands of years, however. Our generation is the only generation in the history of the world who is lucky enough to see these things come to pass, and it's happening right before our very eyes. Now, at this point, some of you may be saying to yourselves, but the Bible was written by men, and Jesus Christ is just a myth. So why should we believe in some fairy tale from a time long ago? Fairy tale? Myth? Actually, this couldn't be further from the truth. The truth of the matter is that Jesus Christ was an actual historical figure whose life was well documented in non-biblical historical records. He was even documented performing miracles. His crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension are all matters of historical record. Real historians and scholars from all over the world agree on these things, and anyone who investigates these matters for themselves will reach the same conclusions. And I'm not talking about just googling something or reading articles written by people who have an agenda. I'm talking about source material, original documents, and historical records. These things have no agenda and are not open to interpretation. They simply tell it as it is. Now, we could go on for hours talking about this, but I'll just leave you with this clip from Lee Strobel's The Case for Christ. I remember going alone in my room and I took a yellow legal pad and put a line down the middle and on one side I started to list all of the evidence I had encountered for Jesus Christ being the Son of God and on the other side all the negative evidence against that and I, I wrote and I wrote page after page and finally I put my pen down and I said, wait a minute. In light of this avalanche of evidence pointing toward the truth of Christianity, it would require more faith for me to maintain my atheism than to become a follower of Jesus Christ. So now that we've established that Jesus Christ is a real person, let's take a look at some of his words and the prophecies he made and see if they hold up in modern times. So one day, some of Jesus' followers came to him and asked, What shall be the signs of thy coming and of the end of the world? Jesus gave them a list of things to look out for, and then in Matthew 24, 7, he says this, for nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. The beginning of sorrows, meaning when you see these things take place, there is no turning back. These events are going to set off a chain reaction resulting in the end of the world as we know it, or as it's called biblically, the day of the Lord. All the things he said are coming to pass right before our very eyes. Let's break it down. Nation against nation. The word used in the original manuscripts for nation is ethnos, meaning a race, that is, a tribe. So ethnos versus ethnos, or race versus race. Sound familiar? What about kingdom versus kingdom? Well, we see this playing out live on TV every single day, and it has been for well over 100 years. The first time China has expelled and actively denounced the U.S for what it calls the illegal trespass of a warship off the Shisha Islands. India and China will be holding their seventh military level talks on Monday. The meet is expected to not only take stock of the situation on ground, but also the measures on de-escalation by the Chinese side. Heavy fighting between Armenia and Azerbaijan has continued for another day. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. The kingdom of the West versus the kingdom of the East. And it's not just about war, it's about ideologies, domination, and control. Kingdom versus kingdom. There shall be famines. According to the United Nations, the world is on the brink of a biblical famine caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. 135 million people in 55 countries experienced acute food insecurity in 2019. 135 million people. And that was last year, before COVID-19. Let's put that into perspective. 135 million people. That's almost half of the entire population of the world when Jesus was alive. There will be famines. Pestilence. The word pestilence means a plague, literally the disease. 
Can you think of anything that matches the description of the disease? Not only that, but people are the sickest they've ever been, historically speaking. We have modern medicine and drugs that don't heal people, rather they keep people sick and just manage their symptoms. That's why it's not called the healthcare industry, it's called the sick care industry. According to the World Health Organization, 29 million people die each year from preventable diseases that could be cured with proper diet and exercise. Pestilence. Earthquakes in diverse places. Despite what you may have heard in the past, this is the compiled data from the USGS from over the last 100 years. Keep in mind, that we're not talking about the millions of micro tremors that can now be detected from the distribution of more numerous and sensitive sensors, but strictly data from the larger earthquakes that can be felt by people beginning at 6.3 and up on the Richter scale that could be easily detected by early 19th century sensors from virtually anywhere in the world. This data shows what the USGS and other organizations do not want you to see. It shows that the earthquakes are increasing in intensity and they are increasing in frequency. This is exactly the description that was prophesied. Now, these aren't the only things that Jesus told us would happen before the day of the Lord occurs. He also said, Matthew 24, 9, Then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. We see this exact scenario playing out right now, all over the world. Places like China and North Korea have underground churches where their members risk death if caught. We see groups like ISIS lining Christians up and decapitating them on camera, and then uploading the footage online for the whole world to see. Not only that, he said, "Ye shall be hated for my namesake, and that's exactly what's happening in society as a whole. People are embracing this newfound hatred for Christians and for Jesus Christ. Christians are now being looked down upon and treated like some kind of disease that needs to be cleansed from the earth. Ye shall be hated for my namesake. Matthew 24.10 And then many shall be offended, and many shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. Many shall be offended. Hmm. Sound familiar? It's no secret that society has become ultra-sensitive and now people get offended by every little thing. You can't even speak about ideas anymore without someone taking it the wrong way and hating you for it. People call it political correctness or cancel culture. And the Bible told us this would happen. Many shall be offended. Check. And then Jesus said in Matthew 24, 11, And many false prophets shall rise and deceive many. False prophets deceiving many. Again, this should sound very familiar to a lot of you. We have people like Joel Osteen, Kenneth Copeland, and basically the entire NAR movement who are leading people in the wrong direction by preaching a false gospel to their millions of followers. There are hundreds of examples of this. The false gospel is being preached, and concepts like repentance and hell are being excluded from the Bible because people are too scared to talk about them. False prophets. Check. Matthew 24, 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Iniquity, otherwise known as wickedness or sinfulness. It's running rampant in our world. Just turn on the TV and wait five seconds. You'll see. Scovy for PrEP, a once daily prescription medicine that helps lower the chances of getting HIV through sex. Move! The subject's closed. Yeah! Uh, it's a robot that is designed to molest children. <laughs> Another thing Jesus said in Matthew 24, 14, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then the end shall come. This is a curious one. The gospel of Jesus Christ shall be preached to the whole world, and then the end will come. This news story from late 2018 really hits the nail on the head for this one. This missionary was killed by an uncontacted tribe on a remote island off the coast of India in late 2018. And this island is thought to be the last place on earth, literally, where Christian missionaries have never been. He was killed preaching the gospel to literally the last place on earth where the gospel had never been preached. And think about this, what happened since then? Basically everything. Since that time, late 2018, the world has gotten exponentially worse, and it's actually quite astonishing how fast things have declined since that time. The gospel shall be preached to the entire world. 
check. All these things Jesus warned about have come to pass, or are coming to pass right now. But what about the rest of the Bible? What other prophecies have been fulfilled regarding end times events? Well, the list can go on for miles, so we're just going to cover a few of them here. The book of Daniel, chapter 12, verse 4. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Many shall run to and fro. According to the FAA, over one million people fly every single day. On top of that, there's an estimated 1.4 billion cars on the road globally, with more being added every single day. There can be no mistaking it. Our generation has more people going to and fro than any other point in history. Many shall run to and fro. Check. And knowledge shall be increased. This one is no mystery. With the advent of internet, smartphones, and technology, more people have access to the collective knowledge of all of humanity combined than ever before. Approximately 4.57 billion people in the world have access to the internet. Compare that with the 300 million that were alive during Jesus' time, and there could be no mistaking it. Knowledge has increased to levels that would be considered impossible by the people living in biblical times. Knowledge shall be increased. Check. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So this prophecy has two parts. In the latter times, people will 1. Depart from the faith, and 2. Give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Now, it's no secret that large numbers of people are abandoning Christian beliefs and exchanging them for New Age ideas like reincarnation, karma, and the law of attraction. Here are a few charts from the Pew Research Center that illustrates the decline of Christianity in America. So this is between 2018 and 2019. And as you can see here, it breaks it down into the four generations and how many are Christian. The silent generation, born 1928 through 1945, 84% are Christian. Baby boomers, 1940 through 1964, 76% are Christian. Generation X, 1965 through 1980, 67%. And then now we get to millennials, 1981 and 1996, 49%. That's 35% decline. Only 49% identify with Christian beliefs. Now, if you look at the other side of the chart, 40% of millennials are unaffiliated, meaning they're atheist or agnostic or something like that. However, we know that these numbers are probably not too accurate. And people who identify with being Christian doesn't mean they're Christian. There's a large difference between somebody who maybe was born in a Christian household and identifies culturally as a Christian and somebody who is a born-again Christian. There's a huge difference there. So this chart doesn't tell us who's a born-again Christian and who's not because we all need to become born-again Christians. Nobody's born a Christian. It's a decision you have to make for yourself. Now that we've established the fact that people have departed from the faith in large numbers, let's take a look at the second part of this prophecy. People will give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So what exactly are seducing spirits and doctrines of devils? Well, spiritualism, new age belief, witchcraft, and shamanism all fall into these categories, but that's not all. We can take a look at Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 10 and get a little bit more detail on this subject. Quote, there shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all these things are an abomination unto the Lord. It's as clear as day. New Age beliefs are an abomination to the Lord. You see, all these spiritual ideas do not come from God. They come directly from Lucifer himself. Remember what he told Eve in the Garden of Eden? Ye shall be as gods. Sound familiar? Because that's exactly the same philosophy that New Age teaches. New Age beliefs say that we are all God, the universe is alive, and we are part of it. We create our own destiny, we are masters of our own universe, and if we want something bad enough, just will it into existence because you are God. Now, we know that's false, and we know there is only one God, and that's exactly why it's an abomination unto the Lord to practice these things, because we're trying to put control into our own hands when there's only one in control, and that's the Lord. The bottom line is that New Ageism comes directly from Lucifer. Ye shall be as gods. It's the oldest lie in the book. Now, let's take a look at another chart from the Pew Research Center and see what it says about how many people believe in New Age beliefs. Now, take a look at this chart and you're going to see something shocking. 
It says right here, plain as day, 37% of Christians believe that spiritual energy can be located in physical things. Also, 40% of Christians believe in psychics. What does that tell you? It tells you that people don't read their Bibles because we know that it is an abomination unto the Lord to believe and practice such things. 29% of Christians believe in reincarnation, and 26% of Christians believe in astrology. These are all doctrines of demons, and they are giving heed to seducing spirits. And it's not just Christians that believe in these things. If you look at this chart it says right here 78 percent of people believe in at least one new age belief 78 percent there can be no question about it people have departed from the faith and have given heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils making this prophecy fulfilled now let's take a look at romans chapter 1 verse 22 through 32 and see if this rings any bells for you. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible men, and to birds, and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lusts of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up to vile affections, for even their women changed their natural use into that which is against nature, and likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of of the woman burned in their lust toward one another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do these things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable and unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they would commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Now, there is only one generation in the entire history of the world that matches this description. There can be no mistaking it. Just look back through history and try and find one generation that fits the bill. You won't be able to. The truth of the matter is that our generation is the only one in history to fulfill all of these things. There is no question about that. We could go on all day as there are many more Bible prophecies that describes the times we are living in, but I think you get the idea. The Bible is 100% clear on this matter. The time is running short. Our King, Jesus Christ, is coming back. No man knows the day, no man knows the hour, but we do know the season. And at this point, there can be little doubt as to what season we are in. So if you haven't done so already, give your life over to Jesus Christ, repent for your sins, and become born again with the Holy Spirit. It's simple. I want to thank you all for watching this video, and until next time, God bless you all.